Hello and welcome back to Ultra Human. It's been a minute. Um, my name is Rachel and I am here to help you be your best human. And today I want to just kind of catch up with everybody out there. I'm going to be talking about just some of the things that I do outside of YouTube and what I think that I could offer up for you guys that I, I think is going to be of, of a lot of value for folks, hopefully. Um, I've actually been asked like where do you get all this information and, and how do you know so much about random uh health things and stuff like that so i wanted to just kind of like talk about some of that with you guys uh especially since it's been a while so it's, this is kind of what i've been up to outside of making videos um so first of all just i guess i have my own health problems and so that motivates me and pushes me into going into uh deeper subjects on health and so, for example, I wanted to talk about, um, there's an app, a uh, couple apps that I have been using. Um, one I have been using for quite a while, it's called Every Dollar. Um, I know that doesn't have a lot to do with health, um, although I think it does, uh, because the way that we relate to our finances and our mental health, um, it, that's a lot of stress when we're having issues there or when we kind of don't know. And I feel like that's what a lot of us do is that we sort of we know that we have problems with money, and so we just try to ignore it, and that makes the problem much worse. So using every dollar, even if you don't do it perfectly, it's the Dave Ramsey budgeting app. Um, even if you're not getting everything in there, it makes you just a lot more conscious and aware of how you're spending your money and what you're doing with your money and where you're really at with savings and things like that. So every dollar app, I, I suggest it to everyone. It's, I wag my finger at my family and things like that and tell them to use this app too. Um, another one that's more directly related to things I talk about here on this channel is the zero calorie uh, fasting tracker. It's really, really simple. Um, I think that there's a paid version if you don't want ads, but they're just like really little banner ads that you get on there. Um, there is actually a question and answer podcast, the most recent podcast from, at least as of this recording on Happy Valentine's Day of uh, 2019, the most recent podcast from Found My Fitness with Dr. Rhonda Patrick. Um, and I'll be talking about the podcast that I listen to next, which Found My Fitness is certainly one of them. That's where I heard about this app. Um, Mike Mazur is the creator of the app. And so he and Dr. Rhonda Patrick go through a lot of the common questions and answers about fasting itself. Um, they talk a little bit about how to use the app. It's really simple. So my experience with this, uh, like I said, I heard about this when the podcast came out off the top of my head. I don't remember when that is, but so it's been a while and I've been using this app and my average fasting time, I think is like 14 hours or something. So I'm not getting in that full 16, eight all the time. Um, but there's debate about whether or not that's totally necessary. Like I'm not trying to lose a bunch of weight. And so for me, just trying to maintain weight and work on body composition, things like that, a 14 hour fasting window is, is pretty much fine for most people. It just means that I'm being a lot more conscious about not snacking at night. And when I break my fast, I do it really consciously. I try not to have like a big sugar bomb when I do break my fast. Uh, so it makes me just a lot more conscious during the day of like what I'm consuming. It's kind of the same thing. Um, and I, I feel like that's kind of why I, I bundled those in together. The budgeting app makes you just more conscious and aware of how and when and where you're using your money. The tracking your fasting times, it just makes you a lot more aware of like how and when and where and why you are eating. And I think that that's helped me a lot. Um, I'd like to see my partner try and use it. He insists he does not, <laughs> he insists he doesn't snack that much outside of like a 13 hour eating window. I see him wake up at two in the morning and go to the kitchen. So I don't know. <laughs> but, so next I would like to talk about podcasts that I follow um, because that's where I get a lot of the information that I talk to you guys about. So the Found My Fitness podcast with Dr. Rhonda Patrick, also her YouTube channel, um, is a great educational resource for anyone who wants to just know more about how your body works and health subjects. She does talk a lot about fasting. She also talks about the use of saunas, um, so hypothermic uh, exposure and also um, hyperthermic, hyperthermic exposure and then also 
uh, like she's done a lot of talks with uh, Wim Hof, um, so about like the cold exposure as well. Um, Wim Hof also uses saunas as part of his practice. So anytime you can get access to a sauna, know what you're doing, but they're great. You feel great. Also, uh, as you may have noticed in my last video, all of my references just about were from the Hidden Brain podcast from NPR. Actually, their last video uh, podcast that just came out is called Close Enough. It's actually all about living vicariously through watching YouTube videos and about how that's healthy and unhealthy. There's healthy situations for that, but it's also can become a problem. And so why it's important to consume the content that you consume very consciously. So I encourage everyone, even if you're not interested in anything else here, just go listen to that podcast because if you're here watching me on YouTube, this could be a problem for you. And I know that I've done it myself. And it's, it's something that you just have to make yourself aware of as something that could possibly be a problem. So The Tim Ferriss Show is another uh, podcast I really enjoy listening to. Again, his podcasts are sometimes posted to... Uh, YouTube. However, he's usually like a few weeks behind on what comes up on YouTube versus the podcasting app. So Tim Ferriss, uh, in case you don't know, he wrote the four hour work week. He also wrote the four hour body. Uh, he's very conscientious of how to kind of like the be your best human philosophy that we have here. It's just in all aspects of life, of administration, of management, of business, um, and also, of course, your body and how you take care of yourself for optimal longevity and mental performance and physical performance. And so all of those things, um, if you want to check out any of Tim's books, I'll put links to Tim's books down in the description below, as well as there will be links to all the podcasts and things like that in the description below. So Tim Ferriss, he generally will interview someone. Usually it is a top performer in their field. And so just getting little bits of advice from all kinds of different avenues is really great. Um, also, there is the Detail Therapy Podcast. Uh, again, Amy Landino, she will interview people from all kinds of different fields. Um, and mostly she's talking about their professional fields, but also it gets into mental health and things like that on occasion. And I've gotten a lot of value from that because I feel like just understanding a little bit from as broad of a spectrum of things as you possibly can um, really helps put just the whole world in perspective. Like we really, especially in today's day and age, it's so easy to put yourself inside of a little bubble and like not expand outside of that and just like feel comfortable or even feel validated through your own victimization and things like that, that if you really try to break down those walls and understand people who are in another socioeconomic status or another cultural or ethnic status. So just all of those things, trying to just step outside of yourself and really understand where other people are coming from and what their experience is, I think helps us all just be more empathetic, better humans. So uh, the next one would be the Minimalist Podcast, uh, which is the, the Minimalists from the Minimalism documentary. Um, they have their own podcast. Uh, now would be a great time to go catch up on previous podcasts because they're taking the month of February off. And so you got some time before new ones start coming up. And basically they talk a lot on their show about, I, I list this one because they don't just talk about minimalism and not having things. They get a lot into like questions of mental health and like how our things and our relationship with things relates to that. They talk a lot about family relations, just all kinds of things. Like that, It's not just limited to minimalism necessarily. It kind of gets into all of the things that that could touch on. So that's another good one that I feel like I get a lot of value out of. Um, and then just for fun, but also for really a lot of value, because again, like the mental health avenue and physical health, all of those things. Awaken with J.P. Sears is, uh, if you've ever seen, I actually found him when I started this channel, because of my name, the Ultra Human channel, and I wanted to do some videos about gluten-free, so I was looking up search titles. Well, he has the ultra spiritual gluten-free. If you search that, you will find J.P. Sears. He is hilarious. He also really is a health and nutrition coach and a life coach, and so when you get into his podcasts, uh, they 
are a wonderful balance of humor and just like not taking yourself too seriously and then also getting into these really real deeper subjects of like how do we take care of ourselves and the planet and each other while um, trying to do those things in like the most holistically good way possible. So J.P. Spears, Awaken with J.P. Sears, um, he's also going to be in town on my birthday. Not this town, but he's going to be in Portland and I'm going to be there. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get the ticket to do the meet and greet, but that's happening on my birthday. I'm really excited. So, so uh, then on YouTube, I found a couple channels recently-ish of s sort of since my hiatus. I've, I've dived into these as just like a way to keep up on educating myself on other things. So Impact Theory with Tom uh, Bilyeu, I believe it's pronounced Bilyeu. That has been really interesting. I feel like a lot of the titles, don't be scared off from the titles of the videos if it sounds really sort of wooey or <laughs> like, um, like they're making really big claims. The interviews are mostly with people who are scientists, they're professionals in their fields, again, um, and they have very, like he's had Nobel Prize winning scientists and things on, on his uh, talk show, which is called The Impact Theory. And really solid, heavy, great information. I'm sure I will have lots of videos coming up where I get into some of the things that I have learned from his uh, YouTube channel. And so I really encourage you uh, to go over there, subscribe and check that out. I will have, again, links to all these things in the description below. Um, the Matt Duvall show, Matt Duvall, uh, YouTube channel. Again, he's a minimalist. He was actually the director for the minimalist documentary. Um, but he talks about all kinds of like self-improvement things in addition to minimalism. Um, and he also gets into, if you want to subscribe to his Patreon, then he gets into like how to make YouTube videos or like travel videos and things like that too. Um, so just all kinds of little advice from there. But he recently did a quitting a sugar for 30 day video. Uh, so you might want to go check that out because it relates to kind of the things that we talk about here. And then also, again, to bring it back in because I think it is important and it's undervalued in terms of how it affects our health and our mental health. But there is another channel called The Financial Diet which is one of the Complexly channels, which John and Hank Green, Hank Green, I think, runs Complexly, which is, they're all kinds of educational channels. And anything Complexly, anything with the Green Brothers, I highly suggest, again, because we're talking about, I think Hank Green might be the person I look up to most at this moment in business, because he's very genuine. He really wants to help the world by educating people which is what I'm all about. That's why I have this YouTube channel. Um, he and his brother started the Crash Course series. So I'm sure any of you, especially if you've ever gone to school, uh, any kind of continuing education or anything, you have at some point or another looked up how to do something on YouTube and you have come across a Crash Course video. And if you haven't, I'm surprised you're watching this right now because I don't know how you could YouTube without coming across something with John and Hank Green. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, anything from them, but the financial diet specifically, I think it gets into some really practical advice uh, for people in that 20 to 40 age range. Um, they do some interviews with people so that they get out of like purely the millennial narrow um, demographic. However, if you're in that demographic, it, even then it's especially relevant. Uh, they talk a lot about just the professional world, but then also just practical ways of like how to cook at home, which again, I feel like that comes back to like how we take care of ourselves. And it really matters in terms of you're going to not only waste money on eating out, but the food that you cook at home is going to be more nutritious. It's going to be better for you. You know what you're putting into it. Um, and yeah, and actually that leads me into just a little thing that I thought was fun, which is something that I'm doing at home recently. Last night, I made a gluten-free pizza for our family. I got the recipe from theminimalistbaker.com and I will have a link down there to the pizza recipe and to her website, which is really great. Lots of vegan and gluten-free, very quick. Uh, most of the things are, are like very quick to make. They require very few ingredients. Um, so if you are new to cooking at home, 
Minimalist Baker is a great place to start. This is uh, the, I didn't use, she's got a specific flower mix. I just used this. It's a one for one flower replacement. It's flax and ancient grain. So it's got brown weiss, golden flaxseed, quinoa, buckwheat, amaranth. I also modified her recipe a little bit. I added another cup of millet flour, uh, which is just like, it's kind of grainier. Um, just to like bulk it up so I can make some thicker crusts and things. I added a little bit more water than what she says in her recipe, um, and a little bit more sugar and salt, those kinds of things. Not necessarily trying to make the healthiest thing, but at least it's made at home. It's a lot cheaper than getting gluten-free pizza from the store or certainly from a restaurant. Um, so just a way to like treat yourself at home, cheaper, healthier. So that was a lot of fun too. So there'll be links to those things down below. Things that I've been doing just like with my family and at home and in real life. Um, for one thing, somebody did ask me about the uh, the cube light that I've been using. It's actually, it's sitting on, you can't see I'm pointing at it. <laughs> um, I have been using that and when I have not been using it, I have noticed a dramatic difference. So that I can follow up with all of you guys and say that it has made a big difference. I've noticed, I think I went a whole week at some point without using it. I wanted to say like a couple things about that. For one, it's a vicious cycle that happens, I noticed when I stopped using it because I stopped using it and then I started sleeping in. And then when I was sleeping in, I started to get busy in the morning and things and then I wouldn't use it. <laughs> and, and then uh, when I did start using it again, I also noticed I had to go back to using it at half strength because otherwise it would hurt my eyes. Um, not hurt, but I mean, I would feel my eyes getting strained and stuff. So yeah, if you're going to jump on the Lightbox Therapy bandwagon, then just be aware that if you are keeping up with it, it, it takes some willpower because you have to kind of sit still in front of it for a while um, in order for it to work. And I will still leave it, like if I'm working in my bedroom, I'll leave it on, um, even if I'm not going to be sitting right in front of it, but I also try and leave it off um, if I'm not using it because I know that they wear out over time and then they'll lose their lumens and then they're not going to work as well for you. So there's that, but I would say that the thing that has had the most dramatic impact for me in terms of my seasonal issues, um, not only just like the physical symptoms of like that seasonal depression, but also like my autoimmune things that come up has actually been the Wim Hof method. And so I was starting to get really broken out my skin. Um, it didn't look that bad. I'll, like I was all red through my face and stuff like that, but it wasn't really turning into the usual, like I will get just like scaly skin all over my face and my neck um, and my arms. And it wasn't getting that bad, but I could definitely feel it. I could feel the effects it was having like within my body. Um, and I kind of just like face palmed one day. It was like, why have I not been keeping up doing the Wim Hof method? Um, and I will say like, even now I'm not doing it every day. I'm not doing the full on advice uh, that he gives in terms of like, start your morning with doing the, the method three times in a row and th that kind of thing and doing a lot of cold exposure, but even just doing it a couple times a week and remembering to sneak in a cold shower is, it's made a dramatic difference. Like my inflammation went way down immediately, immediately. I'm not kidding. Like I noticed from before I did it to after I did it. And then the next day I woke up and my skin was better. I mean, like it is insane and it's free and it's safe and look up some videos. I will put links to videos, the videos that I use. I'll put another link to the um, What Doesn't Kill Us uh, book from, um, the name escapes me, but there'll be a link down below and the journalist who followed Wim Hof around and learned his method, really valuable book, all kinds of good stuff in that book. So. There'll be links to all that down below, and yeah, and that brings us pretty much to the end. I wanted to point out one more thing that I've been doing. I looked up a a, a recipe for um, dry shampoo uh, because I like my hair flippies. 
but I looked up a recipe for dry shampoo and I was using that. It's basically cornstarch and baking soda and cocoa powder um, so that it's like not, doesn't turn your hair white. Um, but then I, I realized, because it was getting on my face as I would, you know, shake it into my hair, that um, I would take my brush and I started like wiping it around my face. Now it's not the right skin tone. I haven't started messing around with this, but I wanted to know what anybody thought. Look at the consistency of that. It's like foundation. It's like powder foundation. And you may know I have been on the hunt for a good kind of um, makeup for quite a long time. And it's just, it's really hard to find. Like even the organic makeup that is out there, you, you can't get their list of ingredients and things like that. So I'm a little intrigued and I'm wondering, um, you know, because in the world of entrepreneurial people out there trying to like start a YouTube channel and things like that, you know, a lot of people, uh, you get a lot of success out of like having a product to bring out there into the world. And I, I am not particularly a huge fan of consumerism. And so I, I hate the idea of, of pushing a product that I don't really believe in. Um, but that was, and I'll refer you to another, uh, one of those podcasts, the JP Sears podcast, um, where, oh, I can't remember her name now, but there'll be a link to the podcast where he interviews the CEO and inventor of poopery. If you're not aware, it's a thing that you spray on the top of the water on the toilet. And so when you poop, uh, your poop doesn't stink up the room. And so she is wonderful lady and just as far as talking about like ethical business um I really am behind what she talks about and what she does she has another brand called superhuman uh that is like a household cleaner brand um that has it's all natural um oils and things like that that are doing the job they do a good job of cleaning but they're also antimicrobial and everything and they're completely non-toxic. Um, you could spray it on your kid and not worry about it, unlike Lysol or those kinds of things. So, um, yeah, let me know what you think. It, because I feel like if I could somehow market something like real makeup that was like makeup you could eat. <laughs> because that's something that I, I definitely heard from uh, John Bergman, the chiropractor who inspired me to go back to school for chiropractic and all of this and, and kind of put me on the path of where I am now, he says, if you can't eat it, don't put it on your skin because it's going into your body. That's why there's medications that come in patches um, because you absorb whatever is on your skin. So when you take a shower in chlorinated city water, you're absorbing that chlorine into your body um, or or uh, yeah, any other kind of chemicals that are uh, that are in there, you're absorbing all of that into your body. So when you put makeup on your skin, it's going into your body. And, uh, and yet I don't, you know, I like makeup and I have lots of friends that are drag queens and things. I know they like makeup, but I worry about them. And so it's like, why can't I have my beautiful makeup and my health? And so let me know what you think of that, because that was something that crossed my mind. And if that was a thing that I could bring into the world, I feel like I would be a happy person for what that offered to the world. So I'm so happy to have made this video. I think I'm, I'm going to not even edit it. And I apologize for putting up such a long video, but hopefully you stuck with me this far. And if you did, I love you. And happy Valentine's Day. And get out there and be your best human. Thanks. Bye.